They say it can't be done. <laughs> they say it can't be done. Well, guess what? I think it can. If I'm going to take a stance, which I don't do often, I'm going to take a stance on frequency. I'm going to take a stance on that if you want to get better at X, you got to do X more. And in this case, we're talking about the deadlift. I'm passionate, I'm fired up, and I want to drop some knowledge bombs on Gainesville. Okay, we're going to blow up Gainesville. So, you hear it all the time. You can't deadlift more than one time per week. If you deadlift one time per week, uh, that's all you need. If you do it more, you're going to die, okay? Your spine will literally rip out of your back and explode all over on the wall at the gym, okay? This is the things that we hear. These are the things that flood our brain, and I'm tired of it. So, let's go. Coach Joe, Lion's Den, teaching you, the viewer, the one trying to get a huge deadlift or huge anything, all right? This will work for anything, and I mean anything. Uh, we're going to be talking about the deadlift, okay? Blowing up the deadlift. <laughs> subscribe. 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 Thanks. All right, guys. So, breaking down this video, this is purely going to be anecdotal, okay? What has worked for me and all of the athletes that I program for, which is hundreds at this point, and what I have found in pretty much 99 percent of the cases on working on increasing X lift, in this case the deadlift, increasing the frequency has been best. Okay, so all frequency is is how often you do something. So if you are looking at the deadlift, it could be deadlifting one time per week with a frequency of one. Okay, if we pull twice a week, the frequency is two. If we pull three times a week, the frequency is going to be three. All right, so for me personally, on my journey, just going back, going back, I was deadlifting one time per week, and, and it worked, okay? I was getting better. Much like a lot of you guys when you first start, you're getting better, okay? Because we're getting those newbie gains. Every session we seem to just keep increasing, increasing, increasing. And then, at some point, that progress stops, okay? And this is where you have to make the decision. Do I continue doing what I'm doing, or do I change it up to get a different response? And for years, I actually stuck with doing the same thing, expecting a different result, okay? No bueno. Doesn't work, don't recommend it. So this is why I'm making the video to give you some wisdom from within to help you. And what had worked for me is when I got with a coach, Alan Thrall, who's part of Barbell Medicine team, and they were big fans of frequency. And at first, I was like, <laughs> no way, no way, Mr. Thrall, is this gonna happen? Because I've heard on the interwebs with all these Google geniuses out there that you can only deadlift one time per week. Anything more, you're gonna fry your CNS like an egg and you are gonna put yourself in a horrible position and not make progress. But Thrall, you know, cause he's Thrall in, he had said, trust the process. Well, lo and behold, I listened and my deadlift went from about 600 pounds to 750 pounds in a pretty short time frame. It would have been way longer if I wasn't open-minded to this uh, discussion, to this approach, and that's why we're sharing it, okay? So that's just the background on the story, guys. So open your minds to the possibilities, all right? So let's get right into how we're gonna do this. All right, so there are three things I have on the board, okay? First one we talked about, increasing frequency. So typically, if you guys are on that one time per week with the deadlift, I want to increase the dose. We can start with twice a week, okay? Maybe run that for a block or two, and then maybe we'll even get to three times per week. But if two works for you, stick with two until it no longer works, okay? I'd rather you guys do that than hop right from one to three, because that may be too much, right? It's just like when we have a goal, and we're like, okay, I want to lose 30 pounds in a month, I'd probably say, yo, bro, chill. Slow it down. How about we do one pound, two pound per week? Okay, so same thing with the frequency here. If you're at one, go to two. If you're at two, bump it to three, or in your program structure, the first two blocks, I'm just gonna uh, have a pulling frequency of two, and then in the last couple blocks, I'm gonna increase it to three and see how that works. And you can always change this. This may not work for you. If it doesn't, okay, give the video a big fat thumbs down. All right, I'll accept those thumbs down because they're honest and they're true. Everybody else in here, watch the video for five seconds, give me a thumbs down, you guys suck. So, when we look at the frequency, Say I pull three times per week, which I do. This is how I personally set it up and how typically I'll structure it for my clients that I work with. Day one, 
Okay, so the first day of your training is what we want to put the most emphasis and energy into, all right? A lot of people deadlift, they deadlift like towards the end of the week, and if that's your main goal to get better at, why are you waiting to the end of the week when you're fatigued and other things have already been prioritized? No, we want to put that movement as day one. So Monday, when I come in and train, the first movement I do is going to be a deadlift. Now for me, since I'm trying to get better at a conventional deadlift, that is the variation that I'm going to be doing, all right? Now, later in the week, so say I pull, if I do a four-day split, okay, day one's gonna be down, day two, maybe squats or something, I have off and then day three, so to, for me, it's typically a Thursday, I'm gonna do a variation, okay? And I like to keep it simple. Let's just make the variation uh, something that is going to make our weak point in our lift stronger, okay? so. For you, if it's you get stuck around knee or below knee, maybe some block pulls would be a good suggestion for you. Okay, so that's gonna be our variation day. Maybe uh, for you, it's just keeping good tension as you are lifting a bar off the floor. So maybe some bands are gonna be nice for you to throw in there, okay? But just any variation that's gonna help work on your sticky point or weak point. Easy way to establish that is just see where you break down or where you have issues when you're going for uh, heavy uh, reps and loads. So. That's day two. Now day three, which is probably gonna be on day four, the last day of my training, is going to be some back work, okay? So that could be pulling of rows, right? That could be uh, some sort of lat pull down, some accessory that way, or, or if your body can tolerate it, you may wanna do some RDLs. Maybe it's gonna be the barbell, maybe it's gonna be the dumbbells, but that's gonna be a little bit better because it's mimicking the movement we wanna get better at, it's increasing the frequency uh, that's very close to what we're trying to improve on. Okay, so that's the first one, increasing the frequency. The second one we have to consider, which I a lot of these points are going to overlap just a little bit, but I'm going to dive deeper into them, is variation. So some questions you want to ask yourself is how far out am I from the competition or when I need to test this? So for me, like I said, my first day may be my comp lift, but that's going to be typically probably, let's say, 16 or to 12 weeks out from testing. Now, if I had 20 plus weeks, maybe that first day isn't gonna be a conventional deadlift. Maybe it is going to be a, a sumo deadlift. Maybe it's gonna be a trap bar deadlift. Maybe it will be a conventional stance, uh, but there's just gonna be some variable about that variation that's gonna be slightly different, okay? Because the way I think about this, I'm kind of bringing you guys into my mind with this video, and hopefully you're digging it. If you are, subscribe, is that we are you know, so far out that we can work on all these other portions of the lift, different variations, build lots of good volume, and then as we reintroduce this novel stimulus, which is gonna be the conventional deadlift, after doing all these variations, it's gonna be super easy, right? We have a typical deadlift, conventional deadlift, boom. But if we were doing things like bands and chains, doing trap bar, block pulls, all these different variations, and then as we get closer to the test where we're just focusing on a conventional deadlift, all those other things are gonna build this deadlift up to be super strong and really good. So, if you're further out, you have more options to play with variations. If you're closer, I would say day one, make the competition deadlift gonna be specific to whatever you are testing yourself on. The other thing is gonna be specificity. So, if you're a sumo puller, right, and you're getting close to competition, don't be pulling conventional on the main day, or don't be doing can, um, like conventional deadlifts or tons of other variations that aren't close to whatever it is you're trying to be specific at, okay? That's like one of the most common things is if we wanna test something, right, we need to get better at that movement pattern. So stop wasting time on things that aren't gonna help uh, with that movement pattern in that test. So specificity, specificity is always gonna be key. Now another part of the variation is sometimes just what do you like to do? Right? If we like to do something more, we're gonna be more motivated to train it. I think it goes a long way. There's gonna be some people out there who are gonna be like, no, you gotta do the stuff you hate, right? Because that's gonna make you tough. Hashtag stay in your comfort zone, hashtag stay hard, blah, 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 right? That's cool. I get that you're hardcore, bro, do you. But guess what? For the majority of us, sometimes getting in the gym is challenging. Sometimes, you know, deadlifting, and especially if we're not used to deadlifting more than one time per week, it's gonna be just difficult. So Pick something that you enjoy to do. Pick something that interests you. Something that's gonna make going to the gym and pulling more fun, okay? We've been digging the trap bar, right, for whatever reason, but guess what? We're pushing harder than ever because we're doing some things that we like, and it's increasing the training environment, the training stimulus, therefore, we're gonna get some great results. So, 
do things that you like, and then also think about what you are weak at. Like I talked about for that second day variation, look at whatever you know uh, weak area is in that lift. You can simply Google you know ways the variations to improve my deadlift from X, uh, and then throw that in there. Okay, so that's variation. Last one's going to be fatigue management. There's just a couple quick little things here, but the first one's going to be gear. Yes, I'm talking about tremble. No, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. I'm talking about gear. We're talking about belts, we're talking about uh, wraps, sleeves, all that stuff. So when it comes to my day one, which is going to be uh, hitting my main variation or my main comp deadlift, I'm going to gear up exactly how I would on the day of the competition. All right. So if you guys don't wear uh, wrist or straps, or when you test yourself, you don't be wearing straps when you guys are going for your comp deadlift day. Okay. Same thing as if you uh, you know don't wear a belt or wear a belt like you got to mimic exactly how you're gonna play. So on day one for me personally, I have my belt. Sometimes I wear my underbelt. Uh, I test with my straps, so I'm gonna use my straps, and it's gonna be exactly how I'm gonna uh, look and compete on the game day. Now, the way that we can manage the fatigue, okay, because we are pulling more, right? We don't want to accumulate so much fatigue through volume that we can't continue to train for a long period of time, right? We want to at least get four to five weeks in the training before we take some sort of deload or low stress week. If you don't know what they are, link above. But ways we can do that is by on the variation days, okay? So probably your day uh, three or day four, I say don't wear a belt, all right? Don't wear other supportive gear. Don't wear your suit if you wear a suit, et cetera. And what that's gonna do is probably not allow us to go as heavy as we could with that gear. So therefore, decreasing the total fatigue or systemic fatigue on our body. Now, exception to that is maybe your hands are tearing, okay? I don't want you guys destroying your hands because then it's just gonna push uh, the whole process back even further, let them heal. So maybe you gotta wear straps that day. Maybe you got some low back pain or low back fatigue is just you know, feel on it, throw the belt on if it helps you get through those training sessions. But if you don't need it, don't use it. So that's gonna be on the variation days, all right? And that's how we control the, uh, the intensity and the overall fatigue is by the gear that we have on when we're training. Second is gonna be volume. So throughout the training block, okay, we wanna make adjustments to volume accordingly to manage that fatigue as best as possible, right? We don't wanna be hitting, you know, uh, 15, 20 reps on, uh, deadlift variation because that's super fatiguing. We could probably get away with eight reps, right? So it's like, you know, uh, what's going to be the best bang for your buck, right? They may be the same overall, uh, let's just say stimulus, but like one's going to be better than the other. So go with the one that's not going to fatigue you as much and deliver a better result. Last one, like I said, fatigue management variations. Okay. So depending on the variations that you use, they can help manage fatigue. When you look at things um, like a slingshot, right? For a bench press, that's not going to be as fatiguing as if you don't wear the slingshot. So same thing can be done with deadlifts, right? Block pulls, even though they're heavier, it's a shortened range of motion. So when we shorten that range of motion, we're not using as much energy. Yes, it's still heavy, but we're not pulling that weight from the ground. So we're managing fatigue throughout the variation. So just three points I wanted to cover and kind of my thought process behind this. Hopefully you guys are digging this and you're following along. You got your pen, your paper, you're writing it down, your brain's going, you think I'm crazy because yeah, maybe I am. But guess what? No one got anywhere without being a little bit crazy. Fact check that on Google. So from here, what I'm gonna do is basically lay down a uh, sample little deadlift template that you guys can use for free because I'm awesome and see if it works for you. All right, so this is the real reason why you're here is to get this program. So I laid out a three block program. So 12 weeks of work here, and then we can just fill in uh, those principles that we talked about previously. So we got block one, block two, block three. So when we're 12 weeks out, we're gonna be able to handle more volume, okay? So we have day one, our comp variation, day two, our variation, day three, our accessory. So the way I have this set up for block one, we got eight at six, eight at seven, eight at eight. And then the volume will increase with, we have eight at six, eight at seven, eight at eight for two sets for week two and three. And then the last week, we're gonna push the intensity uh, with the volume. So we got eight at seven, eight at eight, eight at nine, all right? Now, if you want, you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a low stress week. If not, continue on. We got six at six, six at seven, six at eight. Then the next two weeks, we got six at six, six at seven, six at eight for two, and then we drop down to five. So five and six, five and seven, five and eight for two. 
and then five and six, five and seven, five and eight for three, increasing that volume. If you need that low stress week, add it in here. If not, continue on. We got five and six, five and seven, five and eight. Then we got four and six, four and seven, four and eight. And we got three and seven, three and eight, three and nine. Three and seven, three and eight, three and nine. And then we're testing. So as you can see, we start off with a lot of volume and we taper everything down and we get ready to go for our test. Now, if you want, you guys can do singles, okay? And I'll just attach a little singles chart here uh, with the video because I have them. But if not, this is totally fine to run this uh, as it is for our comp variation, okay? So for me, it's gonna be my conventional deadlift. If you pull sumo, that would be your sumo deadlift. If you wanna test your trap bar deadlift, that would be your trap bar deadlift, and one that we are going to test on game day. Now here we have variation, okay? So slightly different with the RPE here. We're gonna go eight at seven, eight at eight, eight at nine, so it's three sets, and then we're going to repeat whatever our first set was for our back off. Very simple to understand. If it felt like it was too light, then just add maybe uh, five to 10 pounds onto that, and we're gonna follow that principle all the way down throughout the next uh, several weeks. However, we're going to add some back off sets. So on week three and four, the back off is gonna be for two sets, all right? So same rep scheme uh, all the way through besides till the end. Then we're gonna drop the volume. So we're going six at seven, six at eight, six at nine. Then we're gonna go six at seven, six at eight, six at nine, repeat our seven and do that for the next five weeks, but just do two sets to repeat. So when it has by two, it's really five total sets, okay, five sets. Uh, then we're going to go to the third block. We have four at seven, four at eight, four at nine. Uh, keeping the volume a little bit lower because we're kind of recovering a little bit and we're pushing it as we go through the week. And then I am going to let you guys decide if you want to do back offs or not, depending on how your body feels. If you want to do the back offs, repeat at seven uh, for these last couple weeks. If not, since we're getting closer to a test, you guys should be okay with this volume. So then it just tapers down three at seven, three at eight, three at nine. Then it goes two at seven, two at eight, two at nine for some heavy doubles. And then, of course, the last week is going to be testing week. For the accessories, so for the accessory guys, this is going to be like what I talked about. Maybe it's going to be some back work, some lat pull down, some rows, any type of pulling thing, or maybe some RDL, stiff like deadlifts, et cetera, if you can handle it. We're going to increase the volume a little bit more because um, these are probably typically going to be uh, less fatiguing movements, smaller muscle groups, so we, we, we're okay to handle a little bit more volume here. Uh, we're going to do 10 and 7 for two sets. 10 at seven for three sets, 10 at seven for three sets again, and then 10 at seven for four sets. That's a lot more volume, but like I said, we should be able to handle it because the, the, the movement's not gonna be as fatiguing as like a normal deadlift. Okay, hopefully you guys are following me. Second block, we got eight at seven, eight at eight, and then eight at eight again. Then we go eight at seven, eight at eight, eight at eight. Same thing for the next week. And then the last week is eight at seven, eight at eight, eight at nine. So we're pushing that weight, uh, still getting a good amount of volume in. And the volume's gonna drop for that last block. And we got four at seven, four, uh, or, or six at seven for a set, then eight, then another set of eight. And then we have six at seven, six at eight, six at eight. Then we have uh, six at seven, six at eight, six at nine. Then we have five at seven, five at eight, five at nine. So that is kind of the rundown uh, for this. So if we were going to put in some variations real quick, I'll kind of break this down. So for the comp days, it's going to be always whatever you're competing in. So you guys decide. Maybe it's gonna be conventional, maybe it's gonna be sumo, maybe it's gonna be trap, but you guys are probably gonna be somewhere in the conventional or sumo. For the variation, maybe for this first week, uh, we're just gonna do, uh, let's just say a pause at shin for a one to two count. You pick. Then that's what we're doing for the whole variation uh, for that block. Now the second one, maybe we're gonna do block pulls. Let's just say at knee, okay, for this whole block. And then for this last one, maybe we do, let's just say, maybe we just make it simple and we go deficit deads one to two inches, okay? So that's what we're gonna do there. For the accessory work, maybe here, we start with uh, some pull downs. We're gonna get a little bit more specific as we go down, so let's do uh, R, D, L's, and then for this last one, we can either keep it R, D, L's, uh, or maybe we'll do some sort of row, okay? Just to keep it really simple. Not wrong or right, but this is kind of a layout of how we can go from in, uh, increasing our frequency from one time per week to three times per week. 
Now, if you just want to increase it to two, all you can do is either cross out the variation part or the accessory. I'd recommend keeping the variation in and crossing out that one if you didn't want to do three days per week, but play around with it and try it out. So, a little bit longer of a video. Hopefully you guys are staying with me and hopefully I was making a little bit of sense. There was really uh, not much structure. I was kind of just spitballing out of here, the noggin, the Jimmy Neutron brain that I got going on, and hopefully it's going to help you guys. So, if it did, smash the like button, subscribe again. It's like the 15th time I said subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I'm coming after you. And make sure you guys, of course, of course, check out all the programs on ZazTrack.net and stay a lean, mean, strength machine. Peace.